uh, good afternoon and thank you, Aldo and Victoria, and also the Polish Ministry of Development Funds and Regional Development for the, this kind uh, invitation to, to share a Circular Cities initiative, which uh, will be a, a bit of where we're at uh, since we are still implementing, but also how we got here and hopefully where we had it in the future. Okay, so just, you know, who I am and where I come from. Uh, I, I'm very fortunate to be a part of this uh, great team based at Digitritorio, a sort of uh, alignment of wills and skills. Uh, they all made and still make this uh, journey happen. And I can tell you there were an, uh, quite a few more people involved in this uh, initiative, but I don't have the pictures. So this is uh, an incremental innovation tale I'm trying to tell here. So now for a bit of uh, ancient history, almost 15 years ago, we promoted the urban networks for competitiveness and innovation for Juan Franche Polis Vintium policy program. It uh, eventually set up several thematic and territorial networks, some of which uh, linger until today. And uh, we had that experience, but after that, we developed the Sustainable City Strategy 2020 and 2011. And to implement it, we created the Foron de Chidade, which actually became an important vehicle for dialogue with cities. But we failed then to realize the promotion of those urban knowledge and innovation networks. So you can say that became a sort of a big thorn on our side. Then uh, back sort of came to us uh, a sort of star in uh, EU heaven and from Urbac 3 we really started getting involved also with the national Urbac point so Urbac is a really great program I'm glad Celine is here today to show you but it is more than just the network activity it's a, a shared learning culture and a knowledge and evidence hub and a community of practice and also truly a great team as well Well, from this slide, um, you can grasp how successful the numbers of Verb Act implementation have been in Portugal. But when we observe territorial distribution, it is sort of a, a tilted country. And this is a common pattern of ours. Well, it doesn't mean that we are happy with it, but it's not Verb Act's fault either. Uh, although it showed us there is only so far into our territory at EU level, uh, an EU level English spoken program can reach. Okay, so we knew that the airbag method works in tackling urban challenges, and I can tell you we have more than enough of those. And that in Portugal, it yielded go good participation in results. So an idea started brewing to bring airbag to the national level, trying to solve the territorial imbalance conundrum. We were so also getting exposed to the urban agenda for the EU experience as well with its thematic partnerships and its multi-level governance gaps approach. So those angles of policy driven capitalization also found its way into the mix. And I, I can still remember my, my boss, Elisa, calling me at ABC saying, we have to have national urb act. And I would say, okay, yeah, but this and that. Well, apparently, where there is will, there is a way. And what do I know? Leading the transition and to the circular economy action plan into scene. Well, it was a genuine all of government, all of society proposal, the first of its kind in Portugal, and with a hefty backing from the environmental fund to make it even more attractive. And sure enough, there you have it, that elusive dimension we sought and our coveted networks of practice, evidence and knowledge. They actually organized this Circular Cities Conference. They invited a bunch of cities to attend. And well, well, let's just say they found the hard way that circular urban networks don't just materialize from sheer proximity. And that was our right place at the right time moment. And voila. This is how our Circular Cities Initiative came about in 2019 the ministry of environment and climate action gave us three years and one and a half million euros of the environmental fund to support and empower municipalities and their communities in the transition to a circular economy yay so someone is on the institutional governance setup the digital functions as managing authority aided internally by a technical secretariat much like urbact from the outset 
a programming and monitoring commission was enacted where you have uh, the regions an appointed selection of intermunicipal communities and the national association of municipalities represented well it convenes in opportune moments for the initiative and uh, discusses concepts themes regulations eligibility and selection criteria the call results and the monitoring of networks and its members uh, also have assisted in amplifying the initiative and reaching out to municipalities so for us the program has a very straightforward sequence first it aims to facilitate capacity building on the ground if you will essentially through the action planning networks making sure that they reach expected results well, the accumulated knowledge and evidence may then serve to benefit other municipalities and enhance uh, what we call an ensuing policy dialogue of sorts to identify and address the information, resource, knowledge, funding, regulatory and intervention gaps that we identify. So communication and the clear and transparent internal and external flow of information is thus critical for both aspects of capacitation and capitalization. And that perspective has since become a sort of a, a feature of the initiative. <coughs> as you can very well attest in this slide, where we have four circular transition priority themes that we finally agreed on on the program. And I say this because this crystallization was a process in and of itself, because the themes are a sort of a, a Pandora box, since uh, in the end, everything has to do with everything. And each single stakeholder has their own take on priority, on boundary, on synergy. And uh, of course, we are by no means circular economy experts. In fact, we took up this challenge and then we realized we still had a lot to learn. And so we reached out to our cities and partner institutions. And boy, was that a sobering exercise but in the end we find that we gain confidence that these are the angles that portuguese cities would resonate with and adhere to okay even if it draws from many other references the INC2 networks are essentially a reflex of urbac for us uh, that means balancing this tension between inspiration and adaptation trying to resist this impulse of fixing what was not broken considering urbac's many years experience and proven track record but at the same time we understood that we had a specific context with specific challenges to be met so some things would we would do differently simply because it made sense to us and some others because we simply had no other choice so this is a good picture of what we produced uh from the uh, backed apn approach which is sort of uh, about core identity and the things we wouldn't want to compromise on and here you can realize some of our predicaments and options starting from the circular economy action plan umbrella purpose and extending to accommodate the downscaling to national level and what we call the Portuguese reality in pol political, administrative, institutional and territorial terms. Another proprietary reflection we did was uh, uh, around the partnership formation criteria and our pledge to reach further territories than uh, back with initiative. We knew the native language and the national framing would make the cooperation process more accessible for our municipalities, the ones especially that are traditionally wary of EU level programs. However, we fear that the tendency upon partnership setup would favor bigger, more experienced and resourceful cities. So we opted to devise these criteria to even the playing field, if you will. And first and foremost, we were concerned about, of course, equal opportunity to cities trying to fulfill our territorial cohesion goals. But also we found that to succeed in this uh, aspect of uh, prospective probing of the terrain, which uh, uh, an urban network also allows for, we would benefit from maximizing the partnership's diversity by design, and therefore the criteria, which would provide a fuller picture of the different challenges on the ground and their underlying causes. Uh, and as self-evident these criteria were to access for us, they obviously placed an added stress on the critical partnership setup phase. 
so we had to provide a marketplace uh, platform, which became a sort of dating app for potential partners. But more than that, it helped us raise overall awareness for the program, and it gave us a clear pre preliminary picture of the experience, the interest and preferences of Portuguese city. Well, before I share the outcome of this process, I thought you might like to understand how this all played out chronologically. A couple of notes here. It takes time, besides opportunity and resources, to have all the different components mature and settle. So we had a, a strong Urbac reference and we had a few aha moments like, uh, okay, now I understand why Urbac does this, but it is a maiden voyage for us. So we, and we actually developed most of the specifics from scratch. So uh, uh, we have shared how much a uh, collective after this was with all our partners so you sh should never discount preparation time and having said that some things you can simply not prepare for we all know how difficult this couple of years were for the world and it took us uh, its toll on the initiative as well and finally some numbers here we ended up with a total of 166 manifestations of interest in the circular marketplace and still on the verge of the calls deadline we were sort of biting our nails and tracing scenarios for uh, what if they don't respond but they actually came and they came in force and we had 17 different partnership applications 16 of which were eligible and 129 potential partners and once we understood how good their quality was we suddenly became sort of victims of our own success having to choose between very good and excellent applications and to deal with the disappointment of all of those who failed to make the cut so we stand vindicated practice is the criterion of truth and it was uh, if our country as if our country lit up like a, a christmas tree they were uh, all along uh, they they were there all along after all these these cities all these urban authorities from the regions uh, that failed to gain traction in urbact now represented 40% of our applicants and so I introduce you to our four circular cities networks, our, our babies of sorts, uh, 32 partners from 28 cities, 10 of which uh, the ones with the asterisk are, are, are back cities. And these, these are the real his, uh, heroes in the story. And in case you were wondering, they have been working hard and well at that. And we have gone through phase one, which is network consolidation and baseline study. And we are halfway into phase two, which is action planning. And we are very happy with the results so far. As for the initiative, we make sure to keep close to the network activities, but we also have program activities. We organize an annual conference, which is an open event where we show where we're at and we try to promote political support and external linkages. We have the first in Gaia, which is our urban planning and construction network leader. And we will be holding the second edition in about a month's time with the collaboration of Figure the Foch, which made the uh, would heads the circular net network. We also did our humble version of the Urbac University. We call it the Circular Cities Networks Academy, which feature a three-day action-packed program in Fundão, again, with the uh, Urban Link leaders' tremendous help and support. We had lectures and workshops and field visits and meals and coffee breaks with a total of 82 participants. It focused on providing the basic tools for partners to use during the action planning phase, but it was also very important circumstances of sharing and bonding between networks. So now communication, this is how we framed it in the program. You can see that we really like this resource pooling approach and it has served us well thus far and as much as it has this uh, multiplier effect uh, around the initiative. So I, I, I will quickly um, show you our side of that equation. We haven't invented the wheel, so we have a website we try to keep clean and updated, and we have a newsletter which, besides news in circular economy references, features an article coming from uh, a network partner, and then we have a LinkedIn presence as well. And so my final slide, uh, after all this information barrage, I will now play a, a small word game. In essence, some reflections on our behalf regarding the initiative. Well, first is experience. And experience is really first and foremost, and we mean 
your own direct experience together with a clear notion of how the airbag program works since you're adapting it uh, and uh, your partner's experiences as well extending to the experience of cities on the ground and uh secondly we cannot have succeeded without all our experts and uh we tapped into the uh, back pool of experts so they brought their own you know experience again uh to network activities but also into program development and program events such as the conference and the academy and we also have the social studies institute collaborate with us extensively from the beginning and third is experimentation. Well, uh, experimentation is a blessing and a curse, but the INC2 is a small experimental initiative and we have to deal with that, meaning it is meant to test a model to prove an adaptive concept. Well, even with back guidance, we are bound to make mistakes and we have to deal with unforeseen consequences and perspectives. And we did, but the risk was shared and thus the impact minimized and the learning is precious. And once you realize you might have taken the wrong turn, well, you have to be flexible to adjust and even change course outright without stalling the process. So this flexibility mindset is critical. And then we all talk about miracles of engagement and participation, but the more people that hop on board, the more it becomes difficult to square the circle, to accommodate all views and reach consensus, in essence, to fulfill expectations. So do keep in mind and make everyone understand that there is no single right ways and that sometimes choices must be made. And then complexity. Well, complexity happens, it is there. Urban problems are fuzzy and intertwined and reality is often surprising, not always in a good way though. But you should never mistake inherent complexity with unnecessary complication. And finally, some math. We have four networks and networks have this beautiful feature built into them uh, which allows us to ramificate we have managed to involve hundreds of practitioners and stakeholders in cities and institutions at all levels and uh you here are just the most recent batch if you breed it well enough it will grow exponentially and so who knows it might even impact an outcome thank you Mr. Rasa, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Very impressive, uh, impressive indeed. Uh, I'm sure that our audience will be uh, very much interested in uh, knowing uh, more. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to speak later on a little bit more.